Welcome back. In our first part of this video, we define the materials and we draw our problem. So now we are ready to go and do the mesh generation for our example. So what I will do is to go to mesh module and I will start by clicking on mesh and I want to define the element type used for this uh, example so I will select our plate and say done so the family of this analysis will be plain citrus why plain citrus because this it's a thin plate so the thickness of this plate is very small to the degree that will not develop any stresses or strains in the third direction normal to the plane that's why it's a plain citrus I will keep the geometric order to be linear and I will use incompatible modes and say OK. Now uh, I define the uh, element used for this uh, for our example. I will go then to seed and say part and I will define the approximate global size to be 2.5 and hit OK so we have seats here now I will go for the more complicated type of uh, seats here so I will go back to seats and go to edge I will choose the upper part of our uh, curve and I will hit done then I will define by number of elements used and here I will choose 15 elements and hit OK and I will repeat that or I think you know what I have to do I think I will erase that and I will define 15 here and more elements I will try to have more elements in the upper part so in the lower part in the lower part I will go to seed again edges and I will choose the lower part of the curve and I will define 15 elements now I will go for the upper part and I will define more elements so I will have 20 so in this way, if I want to concentrate on this area, I can have more number of elements. So uh, what we are trying to do here, if you have a constant number of elements, you can distribute your, the number of elements that you have in a way that you concentrate on one area. And the area that you want to concentrate and study it in more details, what you're going to do, you will put smaller a number of elements or finer mesh or why a uh, higher number of elements for this area so as we are very good here we are gonna move uh, for the uh, other edges so I will take this edge and define the number of elements here choose the upper edge and I will keep uh, the basic to be by number but I will change bias to be a single bias single bias give me the ability to redistribute number of elements by concentrated on one end and uh, make the mesh finer in one end of our edge and it will be coarser for the other end so in this case uh, the number of elements that I will use it will be 25 elements and bias ratio will be 2 and I will flip it so the arrow will uh, uh, point to the lower end and in this case we will have a finer mesh in this uh, end and coarser mesh in this end by putting apply and ok you can see it very clearly here as you can see the distance here is very small and get bigger as we are uh, going towards up and now uh, I will define this part I'll go to edges and we'll choose the upper left part say done and we will have like 
35 elements here and I flip it say okay so it's obviously that we have a finer mesh near the end the, the left corner and as we are going towards the center of the plate the area that it's less important to us we will have coarser mesh so by having all of that uh, I think we are ready to do the uh, to see the part say yes and this is our mesh generation it is not that beautiful I'm, I'm sure of that but I think it's um, it's enough to us to do our uh, analysis so now we are ready to go and define our uh, step so we will create the step leave it as a step one that's fine and I will leave it as static general and this is the type of load that we will have and then we will go to load and we will define the load it's not a concentrated force but it is a pressure so this pressure is applied on the right hand edge and its magnitude is minus 100 okay now we have our tensile pressure and now what's remaining before doing the analysis is to know uh, what's the boundary conditions that we have here as you remember this is a symmetric uh, this is only one quarter of a symmetric plate so we need to do to uh, to define this symmetry so I will go for uh, boundary conditions and choose symmetry, anti-symmetry, or incaster, and I will hit continue. I will go for the uh, right part. This part, as you know, it's symmetry around the y-axis, which means that there is no movement allowable in x direction. So I will hit done, and I will define the first. I will choose the first uh, choice here which is u1, ur2, and ur3 is equal to 0, which means there's a symmetry here in x direction, around the y axis in x direction. Okay, then I will define another boundary condition. I will keep it as symmetry, and I will choose the two lower edges, saying done. And this will be no movement in y direction, so y s y m m, which means that u2 is equal to 0 in this case. Here we go. As we defined our load and boundary conditions, we are ready to do our job and analyze it. So I will create the job. I will call it hollow plate 1 continue okay and I will submit this job okay by watching this window you know that all the information doing on your job it's appearing here or you can monitor it from clicking monitor and you will get all the information in your log here our analysis input file is processed and it's completed so we are good okay so our uh, uh, our job is finished you can know all the information that you have in your data file here you can get different information that you want about your analysis as you can see here for example we can know that number of elements used is uh, 1380 and the number of nodes is 4134 and so on okay so we're gonna dismiss it and we need to know the results so the first result is to see the deformed shape and this is our deformed shape voila as you can see uh, for you our left side we can see that we have compression happening here and we have tension in this side so that makes sense if you want to see the, the stresses develop in in our uh, in our plate, this is the stresses, and I am interesting to see the stresses in x direction. So I will choose S11, and this is the stresses in x directions. As you can see here, in the lower corner, uh, which I am referring to. Here that I put my pointer on, which is the lower end of the circle, you can see that uh, we have a compression stress here of uh, 
1.226 multiplied to by 10 to the power 1 and if you go to the upper part of our quarter circle here we can see that we have 4.384 multiplied to by 10 to the power 2 the, which is tensile stress so we have compression stresses here and we have tensile stresses here so i will stop here and i will continue the more details about the graphics that we get and the stresses that we have here in our third part thank you for your patience